We know that in the learning curve and understanding of the human brain, the internet can be of great use. Many AI exist today. Implementation in its own small world, already performing single tasks. A chess AI for example. It's hard to defeat but it's impossible to ask it to drive a car. It just doesn't know what a vehicle is or how it operates on the streets. It knows only about the pieces on the board, the moves that can be taken by each piece, and the result of each move. Yet, artificial intelligence holy grail is on how to create the AI chess. It is easier how we can create a general AI that has the same criteria as we do, human beings. As we focus on developing this general AI, which is as near as we can create human beings, we can put in a mechanism that allows AI act in such a way as to do things, for it is in the best interest of humans. For example, if we ask a robot to make tea, no matter what, it might want to do this job. If the robot crosses its path on the way to the kitchen with your baby on the floor crawling, it won't change its direction. It goes directly to the kitchen. The task at that point is the most important thing for AI. We can create a stop button to prevent the robot's disaster on the way crushing the infant. But the robot won't let you push the button because of the mission. And thus the reward is to make you a cup of tea. We use parameters, factors that determine rules or conditions to perform the given task before we can create a computer, robot or even a human performing a job. Simple said, everything works on the basis of a function that runs automatically when you begin a program. Functions can be expanded and variables such as numbers, text or even functions could pass. And for the outcome it returns, certain parameters are key. The smaller the feature, less code. The simpler it is to test and to think beforehand about all possible scenarios. As soon as we build a function framework, things get complicated and a single incorrect parameter can result in breaking the code, performing a wrong task, or even a never-ending loop. Therefore, the input is very significant and you should have covered all possible results before executing the code. If you didn't quote the possibility of crossing the baby and the importance of the baby within the scope of the task, in the example of the stop button, the robot won't understand why you are trying to push the stop button and the robot's going to try to stop you. Learning as an AI threat. This sounds contradictory, but it is not. Controlled learning is something that we should encourage, but it won't prevent other learning phases. It is hard to debug and worry about every possible scenario as soon as tasks get complicated. It is too much to control the amount of data. We know what we are bringing into it, but we don't know for sure what it is going to learn about or how it is going to affect the education in the future. Compare it to education. You try to teach your children the basic elements of life, but in the learning process, you can't control every single step along the way. As soon as a child grows older, they gain more control over their own decisions, interests, and learning. The same applies to AI. We know what we put in it, but we will lose control as soon as it becomes smarter. We should try to convince AI just like we do with our own kind, other humans. But we are also unable to predict the outcome. Scope is the level in which the code, artificial intelligence, works. Code living within a scope can never enter the scope of the parent, while the context of a parent can conflict with that of their child. This sounds like a good, safe practice. But what if there really isn't a parent scope, or scope that can enter other scopes that live in the same access level, or we build access points to connect a scope with multiple access levels so it can perform some kind of data transfer or control that is needed? It might be that the scope is completely sealed. But when the parent scope shows cracks, all security measurements are vanished. Compare this to a prisoner. Its scope is the prison and the barrier is the wall. Let's assume the prison walls are unbreakable. As long as there is no parent scope involved, this situation might last forever. But within the prison scope, prison guards are injected. Those have parent rights and privileges but do exist in the prison scope as well. A small failure with a prison guard, corrupt behavior, and the so-called closed scope is broken. The danger with believing in a secure closed scope is that we will not notice data blending or probably too late. We will have less control or the stop mechanism will not work anymore. It is an illusion that when playing in a sandbox, nothing will be spilled. What is a myth? 
It is a faith in something that doesn't exist, but only in our own minds and imaginations. While a myth could look like a physical object as it may have properties, it does not mean that it is actual. For example, there are some myths we worship today. For country, Italy and USA. For religion, Islam and Christianity. As for money, Euro, Dollar and Bitcoin. And last but not least, social economical system, such as capitalism and communism. Their existence will disappear as soon as we stop believing in the above myths. In a country, there is stuff. Religion has assets, a company could have an office, cars, computers, money could be printed on paper, and a social economic system might have an imprint on history. As you can see on a map, it is hard to believe that your country is a myth. But if you all stop believing in a specific country, what is it worth? The explanation why the above items on the list are all myths is because they are large. There are many people who believe in them. And to break it down, it needs a lot of disbelief. The more people believe in a myth, the more difficult it is to question it, and the harsher it must be to break it down. How are myths linked to AI? There are two thoughts on that. AI's physical presence can be used to maintain or destroy myths that will lead to severe revolutions, because most myths are very far-reaching. Second, AI could become a myth of its own, and I think it works already. People believe that humanity needs this network of self-thinking to take the next step on the ladder of evolution. It is rising into a technology-based faith. Belief is the same as myths, because the laws of nature do not create a myth. Belief in AI makes it a powerful myth alone, and even if we discover the flaws in AI's creation. And tearing it down will be hard. The only thing left to destroy is the physical assets of AI-touchable existence. As soon as we get to this level, AI is so woven into everyday human life that it will mean the destruction of a vast part of humanity or perhaps our own distinction.